So it's really interesting that we were talking about tonight, uh, at least for Chad and I, just feeling a little bit of fatigue, some uh, exhaustion. And actually, a study came out not that long ago that 80% of dental professionals are feeling, or actually oral health providers, so put that in a lump sum, uh, are feeling burnout post-COVID. And I will tell you just in my small circles of friends in organized dentistry and then in the lecture world and then on dinks and then the colleagues that I am fortunate enough to work with on a daily basis, um, that there is a fair amount of fatigue amongst those uh, who, particularly who own businesses, um, but definitely who are continuing to pro provide medical services uh, post-COVID. And now there are surveys and um, statistical data to back up the feeling that many of us are having. In fact, I had a, a future temp employee coming in today, a dentist who sold a practice actually just before COVID. And we were talking about different things. And I just said, you know, COVID just changed. I don't want to say everything, but it changed a lot about how we feel showing up for work every day and what's what's the world got laying for us waiting in the waiting uh, that we're going to need to deal with. So uh, I do think that that's probably a pr pretty realistic statistic. The other piece of that that I don't think we talk enough about is the um, exhaustion that's happening on the team side as well. And in fact, another study that came out of the UK talked about um, how staff shortages and uh, lack of help is uh, contributing to those individuals who are showing up for work every day, aren't getting breaks, uh, they're worried about exhaustion and how that might affect patient care and their attention to detail. Um, so that survey is also showing some interesting statistics about medical professional burnout. And, uh, you know, Jeff and I were talking about this before we got on as he's negotiating uh, elderly care with both of his parents and some of the challenges that we're seeing within the medical profession. So I doubt that these statistics are totally unique to oral health providers, um, but it is uh, it's an interesting take on, I think, what many of us are feeling with both burnout and our staff feeling somewhat fatigued um, and grinding it out on a daily basis. Uh, perhaps that is the wake up call, the call out to look for future opportunities and to change the way we're practicing. But in the time being, that is where the many uh, oral health professionals are sitting in the US today. Another uh, interesting story that came out, um, so we've been talking a lot about workforce on this podcast. We talk a lot about workforce in the news segment. And the most recent study that came out in 2023 for pre-doctoral students when they enter private practice, a huge jump to DSO. In fact, it increased by 20 percentage points. Uh, so it looks like more and more doctors that will be graduating from dental school will be considering uh, DSO or corporate dentistry or some type of large group practice uh, in order to pursue their career. Um, that is a pretty big increase year over year of 20%. A PA woman was sentenced to jail uh, for embezzling from a dental practice and a restaurant of $90,000. You know, for many dentists out there, this is a vindication story. We've had uh, we've had employees over the years that have taken advantage of us. Um, maybe they're just taking a lot of extra things out of the break room. Uh, maybe they're stealing direct cash out of your cash box. Um, but rarely do these individuals really get any form of punishment. This particular woman has pled guilty to the two counts of felony theft and will be spending 30 to 66 months in prison. We wish her the best of luck. And lastly, the city of Albany, the state capital of New York, is finally considering fluoridating the city water. Now, I know you might be asking, how is it possible that there are still city municipalities out there without fluoridated water? And I was pretty shocked to read the story myself. But they have legislation uh, forward for review and vote to bring fluoridated water into their municipal water supply. The state of New York and many of the surrounding areas already have it in place. 
But for whatever reason, the city has failed to adopt this practice. Now, it's obviously interesting that this is coming forward, as I think fluoride is getting a lot of attention, uh, both uh, in the social media outlets and also in the science area about efficacy of fluoride and how we utilize it most uh, effectively for patients uh, while, while also protecting those individuals from the side effects and health issues related to fluoride. But here's Albany charging forward going, it's been a long time. Everybody else has had fluoridated water. We want to participate in the process. So we'll keep you posted how they vote. Uh, you know, we're all fingers crossed for Albany. They get their fluoridated water. And with that, that's the news.